Hey everyone. Um, so I got a message from Douglas uh, Jefferson. Um, he left a comment under um, the uh, the video I made um, a few days ago, and um, he was asking if I could do a follow-up video to Wayne Krantz's book, where you pick a formula with five notes and make music with it in a few positions on the guitar neck. Um, with my random generator, may I suggest one, two, four, flat six, six. So one, two, four, flat six, six is one of 2048 possible tonalities that exists within the chromatic scale. And um, he's uh, referencing Wayne Krantz's book uh, in Improvisers OS. I made a video about this book on, um, on my channel uh, just talking about uh, what it's all about and um, it's basically a way of practicing every possible tonality with the main focus on besides just accessing being able to access any tonality any note any function that you <clears throat> uh, desire uh, but the main focus is to use those tonalities as a platform to develop uh, your improvisational skills and um, one of them is your time and um, in the book he Wayne recommends that um, you kind of start with getting the notes the tonality down being able to access that correctly within that limitation and with those notes placing the placing them with a good sense of time so this is a pretty massive area to explore I don't know how many hundreds of videos could be made about this but uh, many many videos could be made about this so in this one I thought um, I would just kinda talk a little bit about it um, and see if um, it might uh, be useful for for people um, it is an unconventional way of thinking about um, accessing tonalities because most people most guitarists most musicians access a very small portion of those 2048 tonalities and and there's nothing wrong with that of course because plenty of great music has been made with limited knowledge of tonalities and even in the jazz world um, you know for the most part it they're they're kind of sticking to you know 15 of the the possible tonalities um, so major scale and Dorian and the altered scale and the diminished scale and you know there's kind of just like those common maybe 15 to 20 scales that most guitar players even in the jazz world stick to and then as we know in the blues and rock world it's even less than that so yeah I mean it's it can be kind of overwhelming uh, thinking about the possibilities but the way you practice this is not through memorizing. You don't memorize um, the patterns for all 2048 and all 12 keys and every position. What you do is you develop your skill at being able to access functions. And over time, you start to be able to access any tonality, not from memorization, but from your ability to um, access those functions and basically if you're working on searching if you're working on the search then you'll get stronger at being able to find stuff and um, so that's just again just part of the exercise so uh, Douglas Jefferson Jefferson um, was recommending the tonality one two four flat six six you know not common at all right it's a five note scale but it's just as valid as any other five note scale or seven note scale or eight note scale or ten note scale in terms of the musical potential of it and one of the uh, main exercises that um, is suggested in Wayne's book is um, to practice these tonalities within four frets because um, 
it basically forces you to improvise with you know because a lot of the um, patterns that are common on the guitar fall within five frets some four uh, like the pentatonic scales we know or the Phrygian scale but um, a lot of them are in five and just limiting yourself to four frets in different places on the guitar you end up um, in weird zones that you wouldn't normally access and like I said, then it breaks you of any kind of possible uh, hand memorization and therefore it forces you to, to improvise. And that's what we're trying to do here um, when we're practicing improvising is we want these limitations that force us to improvise that get us away from relying on familiar patterns and hand memory and, and licks. But to actually access the tonalities in a spontaneous way musically. So, um, like I said, this is so many videos that can be made about this, but um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I think he suggested the key of D, um, so I'll do, how about at the 6th fret zone here, the key of D um, uh, with the metronome. Um, and I'll play for just a moment. Uh, one, two, three, four. tell some of that stuff wasn't totally in the grid of time um, but so that was the key of D um, accessing formula one two four flat six six and um, you know I've never done that before in my life I don't think um, or maybe I have but I don't remember ever doing it so I'm totally just accessing it by my knowledge of uh, where two is in the key of D where flat six is where four is um, two, one, flat six, 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 two, flat six. So rather than accessing it like this, as most guitar players practice scales, um, a lot of times anyways, traditionally speaking, uh, it would be like this. Up and down, um, not particularly musical. So what this is all about is practicing the tonality in a musical way. Um, playing it just as if you were playing anything else. Um, and what that does is just um, it, it, it takes away the separation of I'm practicing and then I go play music, but rather I'm practicing playing music, uh, making music. And um, I mean, to me, that's the most logical way to, to practice stuff because that's what we want to be doing as uh, musicians, not as theoreticians. Um, we're using the theory, but we're using the theory, the math, to, um, to generate music. And so, um, yeah, I mean, so many thoughts are going through my head right now. I've spent years and years um, thinking about this stuff and working on it. And, um, but, um, but yeah, so, um, I don't know, I'll do another zone. How about without the metronome? That's the thing, like, so I, ask, I, I practice this stuff um, a little differently than the way uh, Wayne does. I've, over the years, just kind of come up with ways that I like. Um, and um, uh, so one of the ways is to um, 
I don't separate melodic playing from harmonic playing, for instance. I allow myself to access open strings, because um, that's what I would do normally if I was playing, so I don't want to kind of take that element out when I'm practicing. Um, and because he recommends to not access open strings for his own reasons, but um, but I allow myself that, and then um, I'm always mixing it up harmonically and melodically because that's how I like to play. So I don't want to separate the two in that regard. I don't want to practice just harmonically, and I don't want to practice just melodically. Although sometimes there are moments where I'm focused more on one over the other, but generally I try to mix it up because um, that's how I like to play. Um, so, okay, so same key, second fret zone, no metronome, I'll generate it with my own hopefully decent time. So, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh-oh. See, I got nervous there um, and got thrown off. Because uh, I don't think I've ever done this in front of cam in, the, in front of the camera before. I played a wrong note, is what happened. And uh, let me start over. Three, four. You know, I mean, pretty much every time I do this, I never think it's great. But that's sort of part of what you're shooting for is great music. And one of the ways to really check for it is to record yourself doing this. And you would listen back to it and judge it based on how musical it is. Um, does it make sense melodically? Does it make sense in terms of phrasing? Does it make sense um, in terms of, um, do you think like the articulation that you're using is... Um, musical and makes sense for the ideas um yeah so i mean you can see how powerful this can be in terms of like picking any tonality any four fret zone um any key and being able to generate music with it um and over time um you you just become a better improviser and all the skills that you develop in these little kind of prisons that you're creating for yourself um, because remember, um, limitation equals expansion. Um, so over time, yeah, when you're, when you're getting better at creating music within these little prisons, um, then over time you just become a stronger improviser and a better listener. Uh, because in order for great music to happen, you have to really be listening. And, um, yeah, um... Let me pick something totally random just to give you an idea here. I don't know how long this video is going for, but um, uh, let me just pick something totally random. Um, how about um, A minor 7 with flat 6? So that would be 1 flat 3, 5 flat 6, flat 7. Um, and the, uh, let me try to pick something weird. I don't know. How about, uh, how about here, 6 fret zone, so the A is actually here. Um, no metronome, three, four.
yeah, so a little more kind of um, relaxed, maybe a little more melodic. Again, I'm not happy with any of these things I'm playing. They're okay. Um, but I recognize as I'm playing, like, things I'm not liking. And again, part of it is just I'm not comfortable yet. I'm going to try to get more comfortable here uh, doing this in front of the camera. Um, I've spent years doing it in my own head and in, in my own kind of space, so this is kind of a new thing. So I'll get better at it, hopefully. And, um, yeah, I mean, um, I guess the last thing I would say, I mean, just, you know, it's another thought. Um, so I'll just force myself to stop here. Um, I'm not accessing it. Um, I was really inspired by the idea of uh, playing with no particular idiom or style in mind when doing this. Um, while it might sound like certain things or referencing certain styles, but I'm not thinking that way. I'm really just thinking in terms of just, let me just try to access music. And by having that kind of mindset, then um, it kind of gets you moving more towards um, uh, playing in a more personal way. And that's what I really want. I, For my own personal music and stuff, I like it when it's not, you know, sounding particularly like a blues guitar player or a rock guitar player or a jazz guitar player, but rather just accessing music in a personal way that is a little harder to define. Um, but, you know, I do have my influences over the years, so some of it's going to be coming out here. Um, but even at bass level too, while I am thinking straight groove, I'm not thinking like a funk groove or a rock groove or a jazz groove or a samba groove or, you know, a uh, country groove. I'm just uh, playing in straight time and uh, trying to generate my own sense of groove. But, you know, again, I'm sure there's um, stylistic things in there that people might be able to hear, but I'm not thinking that way. And um, anyways, all right, guys, um, I'll talk to you uh, soon. Uh, yeah, again, as always, uh, if you have any questions about this uh, very fascinating subject, uh, hit me with any questions you might have. All right, thanks.